Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's project is for the Beaky Booting Design Team and this week I want to show you a layout that combines a few of my favorite things, my dog, fall and mixed media, especially Beaky's products. So what I'm going to do is I want to work with the new products, the powder pigment or pigment powders, uh, the texture paste and some of the new stencils. And I have this picture of my baby, he loves to go to walks with me, I love to take pictures of him, especially in the fall because there's no uh, a lot of grass there's a lot of leaves where I live so he likes to walk on the pads and I love taking pictures of him so I know I'm gonna use that big picture it's pretty much a four by six a little bit smaller I think it's three and a half by five and I'm gonna use that stencil I love the hexagon stencil so my idea is I want to create a really bold background that is gonna make the picture really stand out so you're gonna see the picture has a lot of yellow in it so I'm gonna go with a blue background and for this I'm gonna use the powder pigment or the yeah the blue one um just because i think the contrast is going to help make the picture stand out so you're going to see that what i'm going to do is i added a little bit of the pigment onto my acrylic sheet and i'm going to dilute it but then all i'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit and i mean just a little bit of the powder on a foundation paper i have not yet on my page and then i'm going to spritz it with water and you're going to see how automatically the color starts blooming and I'm going to help move the color a little bit with my brushes at Bicky's watercolor brushes. Am I saying probably? Yes. And then I'm just going to, because I added quite a bit of water, I'm just going to play with the paper and make sure that the color runs on its own. Again, I did not yes to the page. I think I should have. It did buckle a little bit. But I let it sit for a while, so it kind of straightened a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, a buckle, but not enough for me to have put it uh, through uh, my laminator. So you're going to see that I continue working with it. I know I'm going to put the majority of my uh, layout is going to be seated on the left-hand side of the page. So all I'm doing is I am going to add a second layer of color just because I want to create that bold background. So like again, what the way I'm working with it is I am going to add a little bit of the powder. And you're just going to need a little bit. It's super pigmented powder so a little bit's gonna work a long way for you so i'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of the powder and then i'm gonna spritz it with water now what happens when you spritz it with water just before even start blooming just the action that you add in water onto it it's gonna make the color pretty much kind of splatter so you're gonna get like the shadow effect or like explosion effect on the background and then you're gonna see the color start blooming and moving with the water so this is when i'm gonna go with the brush and kind of just make sure that all the pigment gets mixed with the water because I want to make sure that, you know, that I don't get the cl uh, little clumps of um, dry powder in this case. So by using my brush, I'm helping it dilute it. And then you're going to see that I lift the page and then just kind of move the paper around so that the color runs on its own. And of course, I'm going to add splatters. Now, because I have quite a bit of water on the paper, I am able to go with my brush and kind of use the same color of the water, um, the pigment now because it's watercolor, just to kind of sprinkle and create uh, the splatters that I so much love. And you're going to see that I, again, I'm going to sprinkle more powder, go with my uh, spritz bottle. Me, this is Little Mister. But you saw that I put my hand in just, that was just to prevent that the splatters kind of like a spread the powder all over the place so by doing that the water is hitting my hand and kind of dripping from my hand and avoiding the powder to go everywhere. Now. I will suggest that you play a little bit with the powders. Take a little bit of it, not a lot. You're gonna need a tiny little bit. Again, I'm gonna repeat it. Super pigmented uh, powders, you're gonna need a little bit. So these little containers are gonna last you quite a bit. So just be mindful of that. And just play when you add the powder, just add the powder, add the water, and see what happens so you get a better idea. This is all gonna come with playing, practicing, making mistakes, and you're gonna understand how the medium works. So now that I've created eight in my background like my section where the picture is going to go i know that i'm going to have to bring another portion i want to add my title or a second cluster at the top of the picture i just don't want to have everything clustered there so all i'm doing is just adding a little bit of the blue background on that little i'm going to say the top left right corner sorry of my layout i'm just going to add a little cluster a little yeah, a little cluster so i'm gonna make sure that i bring some of the mixed media that i'm using on the background onto that part of the paper too one of the keys here and like i said i added quite a bit of water i did not yes on my page i should have yes on my page but i didn't um it is going to be to make sure that it dries completely so you're going to see that i'm going to put it there you see my head right now just because 
the camera the way I have it set up I have to go inside the shot to reach that part of the layer but the key here is that I have to make it make sure that it dries completely so I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry on its own before I come back with to the next step so for the next step I'm actually gonna play with the texture paste and the textures sorry this texture paste is really creamy it's really nice to work with but it takes a little bit longer uh, than yes to dry so you gotta be patient my idea is I love the whiteness of it but I don't want white I want something really um, that's gonna bring fall into my page so I wanted to use gold but I don't want the shine of the gold so my idea is I'm gonna mix the gold glaze with some of the texture paste and by doing that it's gonna take away the shine from the gold it's gonna when you mix them together you're gonna get a really I'm gonna say it's like a matte gold finish for your application so I'm gonna mix I'm gonna see pretty much equal parts parts of gold glaze to texture paste in my real and my little acrylic sheet and then I'm gonna add that using um, my little wedge through the hexagon stencil from the wildflower and honey collection but just I just want to get the corners of the stencil I just want the little parts that looks like the hexagon or the beehive are distressed so you're gonna see that I'm gonna move my stencil so that I only get the corners and then I'm gonna give you a hint I wanna um, I don't want to add that much of a um, the impression so I'm gonna use a little bit of paper towel just to protect the other area and then I had a hard time with the last um, the last corner I'm gonna say so my choice was I'm gonna clean the entire stencil I went and cleaned the stencil using a um, paper towel and a baby wipe just to clean everything and then I'm able because it's completely clean on both sides to replace uh, the stencil where I want to sit it and then just add the texture paste through it once I have the area in that where the picture is going to be seated i'm going to actually add some of the texture paste also to that little um spot of blue that i added at the top right corner of the layer just because i want to make sure that the two sides um kind of combine and i'm going to set it aside to dry again uh, the texture paste takes a little bit longer to dry than regular gesso and a little bit longer to dry than the glazes so just keep that in mind make sure that it dries completely before you continue working so this layout is easy to put together but it took a while to build just because I had to dry the layers in between so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play with papers and the first thing is to frame the picture I'm gonna bring a paper that is the teal I'm using the 6x8 paper pad and I wanted the teal color because I think it's a nice contrast it's gonna bring all those yellow and orange tones on the picture once I have that in place I am actually gonna work with uh, scraps that I have from previous projects so you're gonna see that once I frame my picture I'm gonna distress the edges of everything I have this piece of paper from by from the six by eight paper pattern this is the one with the craft that says hey honey and stuff like that um and i had a piece left over from i think a project two weeks ago or last week so i'm gonna i know i'm gonna use that little strip behind the picture i'm gonna start bringing some of the colors that are also in the photo some oranges and some of the yellows and i'm using scraps i think this uh orange paper is from the 6x8 paper pad and is the B side the one that has the stripes of colors and then this yellow one is from the sweet honey paper and I really love the black and white stripes I know I'm gonna create a layer with that but I really love the yellow part and you're gonna see that once I add those scraps of paper behind the picture it actually makes the picture stand out and it, com it actually stands out nicely from the layer without becoming like two different layouts because the colors are contrasting but also combine really nice once I have that in place one of the things that I forgot to tell you is that I added a little piece of chipboard in between the picture and the layers this is gonna give me a soft lift in between uh, the layers once I have that in place I actually fussy cut outside of the camera a few flowers from the uh, what color, what's the name of this bloom paper is that the one with the black and white uh, flowers because I want to bring some of that that tones into it my dog is black and white I have a Boston Terrier so I want to bring some of that so I'm just going to create two clusters kind of a triangle if you see the shape sorry the shape that I created and then I'm going to add my title and that's going to come from the Life is Sweet comes from the little booklet the sticker booklet and then I'm just going to go ahead and just finish my layout by creating the cluster that's gonna go on that little section of mixed media that I added on the top right corner of the layout and I'm gonna repeat the same color so I brought one of those banners from the 
I believe it's from the ephemera pack, the one that has the journal spots. Then I'm gonna bring the little chipboard sticker that um, has the teal that I'm using. I'm also gonna use that yes please from the chipboard and then one of the puffy hearts. And that's all it's gonna take. I'm gonna, because I'm adding those accents of black with the gold shine, I'm gonna make sure that I have another one right underneath uh, where I added the second um, flower and you can say and i'm just adding like i said a little label and i think i added a little noted sticker from the uh, sticker book after that i used the section the little mixed media section of the top right corner of the layout i thought it was the perfect place to add my lines with journal and that's about it i love how this turned out i love the contrast i love the subject i love how everything worked out really nice i love the boldness of the background how easy it came together like i said the only thing is i had to make sure that the layers dry completely for me to work through this and it did take a while but otherwise it was so easy and i hope you try it make sure that you check the new stuff if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me i would love to help you thank you so much for joining me today take care guys